years leading to the Revolutionary War. Colonial newspapers emerged as the optimal means for shaping public opinion, spreading information, and nurturing the spirit of independence. Ink-stained news pages chronicled the unfolding drama of rebellion emerging amongst the people, serving as both a reflection and a catalyst for the revolutionary spirit that once swept across the 13 colonies. The printing press made its debut in Williamsburg in 1730. The first printer to leave his mark here was William Parks, who in 1736 founded the Virginia Gazette, the town's first newspaper. This signaled the beginning of an era where the press would become an inspiration for intellectual exchange and revolutionary thought. Virginia Gazette would publish local and international news, essays, poetry, advertisements, obituaries, and other written commentary, often taken from other colonial news pages. Typically sold by subscription, the communal nature of nearby coffee shops and taverns that subscribed made them conducive spaces for the circulation and reading of the latest news. I've heard from Benjamin Franklin, Pennsylvania's agent in London, that Lord Grenville intends to proceed with his stamp tax. Can you imagine they'd lay such an economic burden on us without even asking our opinion? As the press flourished, so did the city. Evolving into a vibrant center where ideas were traded, debates unfolded, and the seeds of independence were sown. While newspapers played a pivotal role in molding perceptions, the print shop in Williamsburg that I was exploring, and elsewhere, also extended their influence to a broader array of printed materials. Books, pamphlets, almanacs, proclamations, broadsides, and more that were commonly printed before the rise of newspapers remained essential ways of distributing knowledge, sharing current events, and conveying important viewpoints. See, they understood that we could be controlled by a print media, which means that if the government controlled the print, they control us. By giving us the free press and free speech, we get to control and dictate the government. As political tensions escalated throughout British America, printers in Williamsburg found themselves at the intersection of a revolutionary crossroads. Print shops all across the colonies, including in Williamsburg, became a hotbed for political discourse, with printers actively participating in debates based on their political stance, using their newspapers as platforms to express their views and mobilize support in their newsprints. If I didn't have a free press, do you think that I could have convinced people from Georgia to side with people from Boston when the people of Boston just destroyed a whole pile of tea. I don't have censorship, so I can print what I choose to print as long as I'm willing to defend it. The famous join or die political cartoon by Benjamin Franklin, initially emerging in the Pennsylvania Gazette in 1754, gained renewed significance during the American Revolution becoming a powerful symbol for the necessity of the colonies to join forces and resist British tyranny. It is well known that Julius Caesar had his Brutus, Charles I his Cromwell, made George the third. Years prior to the onset of the Revolutionary War, as word of the Stamp Act first reached Williamsburg, the House of Burgesses engaged in heated debates. If this be treason, make the most of it! Amidst these deliberations, Patrick Henry delivered a powerful speech that echoed the essence of defiance against the imposition of a direct tax 
on a wide range of printed items commonly used in the daily life of the people. Proposing seven resolutions against the Stamp Act, five were adopted with one expunged soon after. All seven, however, found their way in the newspapers and were circulated throughout the colonies, appearing to have passed. The widespread reach of Henry's resolutions contributed to their enduring influence and played a crucial role in the eventual repeal of the Stamp Act. This episode marked a pivotal moment in the gradual shift from a British colony to the early stages of an independent nation. The printing press contributed heavily to the evolution of political consciousness. Newspapers and pamphlets that were sometimes secretly authored by founding fathers using false names helped to further the resistance movement. In the quiet streets of Colonial Williamsburg, a bustling town on the brink of revolution, as the printing press clattered throughout the air, an ominous shadow loomed over Virginia's capital and the rest of the American colonies due to the growing dominance of British authority. Small newspaper type, carefully set by hand, dated April 22, 1775, and printed in Williamsburg's Virginia Gazette, detailed the actions of a party of men under the command of Lord Dunmore, who came to the city and thieved 20 barrels of gunpowder kept at the town magazine. A group of militiamen led by Patrick Henry made way to Williamsburg in response and were reported. The infuriation of the people had been ignited. Seven days later on horseback, an express rider carried news of the first shots fired at Lexington into the city. The revolution was underway. Only one of two colonial newspapers to run full first page reports of the skirmishes at Lexington and Concord, the New Hampshire Gazette also emphasized the critical nature of their article by choosing the headline, Bloody News, instead of using solely a dated timestamp. Meanwhile in Williamsburg, the printing press published eyewitness testimonies of the first shots fired in Lexington, including one from a British soldier. On Wednesday morning, the 19th day of April, there was a small party of men gathered together in that place when our set troops marched by. And I testify and declare that I heard the word of command given to the troops to fire, and some of the said troops did fire and I saw one of said small party lay dead on the ground. The Virginia Gazette at one point had three competing newspapers bearing the same name in Williamsburg, each becoming platforms for dissent, resistance, and the expanding concept of liberty. But some printers throughout the colonies continued to lean their loyalties towards the crown. As I observed the many relics of a printer's lair, my mind faintly recalled scenes that took place inside a colonial print shop from one of my favorite dramatized Revolution Era television series, Turn Washington Spies. James Rivington a Loyalist newspaper editor in British-occupied New York during the war, revealed how his former print shop was destroyed by the Sons of Liberty for supporting the suppressive actions of the Crown in his newsprint. The Royal Gazette was once the New York Gazetteer, 73 to 75. May she rest in peace. What happened? The Sons of Liberty happened. I ran opinions on both sides of an issue. But they thought that any word that did not actively indict the crown was a sin to be punished. And 
punished they did. The scene also reveals the unfortunate reality of making spelling errors during those days. Is monarch spelled M-A-N? Printed 638 copies, so tonight it is. During colonial times, printers were also likely to publish premature reports to quickly get the latest breaking news hot off the presses in an effort to sway public confidence. Wonder what the bloody news is now. Mr. Rivington is in the fashion of reporting the news before it happens. The show depicts a situation where this scenario took place involving false news on the death of George Washington. The first peak, fresh off the press. It didn't come off. Washington's alive? What went wrong? Stop the damn presses! We need a remake of front page. I want a new lead story, title it, uh, Rebel, Rabble, Routed at Monmouth, Washington left read. Rip out the first column. Replace it with advertisement. Come on, man! Damn it, this isn't a weekly. Although known to be a loyalist printer, Rivington is also thought to have possibly been a part of the Culper spy ring, secretly communicating important information to Washington during the Revolutionary War. His code number 726 was found in the secret code book of spymaster Benjamin Talmadge, the leader of the Culper ring. shop was not merely a place of production. It was a crucible for the forging of a revolutionary narrative. The struggles faced by printers due to changing times and British oppression only heightened the significance of their role. Newspapers slowly became an instrument of defiance a symbol of the colonists' determination to exercise their right to free expression. The influence of the Colonial Williamsburg Printing Office left an enduring mark on the course of American history. The ink, carefully pressed on the paper, often made from fibers of cotton and linen rags, carried more than words. It communicated the spirit of a fledgling nation striving for freedom. The rallying cry found its voice in the bold typefaces and eloquent banners that graced those pages. From the veiled confines of the printing press, an incognito revolution materialized ultimately assisting and sculpting the birth of a new nation.